People are afraid of being hacked. Lynxes won't block all the open WRT. Flash and zero days, perfect together. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for May 17th, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. A big thanks to all the folks that make the show happen by contributing to patreon.com slash threatwire. The National Telecommunication and Information Administration, that's part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, just dropped a thrilling report. Lack of trust in internet privacy and security may deter economic and other online activities. Not exactly an earth-shattering revelation, but the size of the problem might be. Based on data gathered for the NTIA by the U.S. Census Bureau in July 2015, the report pretty much says people are afraid of getting hacked. Or in the words of the NTIA, Americans are increasingly concerned about online security and privacy at a time when data breaches, cybersecurity incidents, and controversies over the privacy of online services have become more prominent. Okay. Survey is pretty huge, actually, included more than 41,000 households with at least one internet user, and frankly, they're nervous, seriously nervous. 63% have, quote, major concerns about identity theft, 45% are worried about credit card or banking fraud, and uh, data collection by the private sector or government worries, less than a quarter of those surveyed, but still, that's one in every four, at least for data collection by the private sector. Data collection by the government, like one in five. I was actually shocked by the number of households that claimed they'd been affected by an online security breach, identity theft, or similar malicious activity during the last 12 months. It ranged as high as 31%, nearly one in every three. Uh, that's for households with five or more types of devices, which frankly seems ridiculously high or things are even more ridiculously bad than I thought they were. The sections on online activities avoided due to privacy or security concerns are particularly interesting. Literally a third of online households are avoiding conducting financial transactions online. More than a quarter are avoiding online commerce of any kind. And that number spikes, gets huge, like up to 40% uh, if they've reported a breach in their household. Trust, ladies and gentlemen, not just an issue in relationships. Uh, and I'd be very interested to see these results broken down by age, location, and other factors. Uh, are older people more paranoid? Are younger people more paranoid? Does it vary by region? A lot of interesting data there, and I hope to see more of it being broken down by the NTIA. We're big fans of open source router operating systems around here, mostly because all too many routers rarely, or well, pretty much never get any kind of security updates. I find it difficult to believe there's nothing to patch or make better. And frankly, the success of open source router operating systems like OpenWRT suggests that there's a lot that can be made better on most routers. Just simply making existing features easier to implement or customize, gee whiz. Which is why the FCC's new rules for router operating systems were pretty scary when they were dropped a while back. The short version is, if you turn off DFS, that's dynamic frequency selection in a five gigahertz router, you can interfere with the FAA's Doppler weather radar systems. Panic, let's block the thing. Well, okay, so it only happens if you live close to the Doppler weather radar systems, which is several locations in the US. So the FCC said, uh-uh, no router OS could be capable of changing those settings. What's the reaction? Well, back in March, TP-Link said they'd simply block the loading of any third-party firmware forever. That's the easy route. Linksys went a very different path, which are as technical documents, and Linksys WRT routers won't block open source firmware despite FCC rules. Wow, that's a long title. Basically, doing the work to make sure third-party firmware will still work with the router. Linksys told ours, quote, the hardware design of the WRT platform allows us to isolate the RF parameter data and secure it outside of the host firmware separately, which is great, but not all Linksys routers are going to get open source support. Basically, the legacy and MacStream routers will have the full host firmware locked down because, hey, they're not marketed as the open source uh, uh, champions like the WRT. It's a bummer. OpenWRT developers, the people that actually make the open source firmware, say that Linksys is the only manufacturer that stepped up to keep open source running on their hardware and that the OpenWRT team is ready to work with other hardware manufacturers. Hopefully some of them will show up for the party because, hey, you're not doing a very good job of supporting most of your routers. <clears throat> A link to Linksys WRT routers won't block open source firmware despite FCC rules right downstairs in the show notes. I got a flash death watch update for you and a great quote. 
At the risk of sounding like a gramophone record that is stuck in a groove, writes Naked Security's Paul Ducklin, for the third month in a row, Adobe has pushed out a Flash update that patches a zero-day hole, which means for the third month in a row, Flash has discovered an open, gaping security flaw that it had to smooth a little spackle over. And that's one more reason to uninstall Flash from your PC, and one more reason why Chrome's continuing to minimize Flash's footprint in the browser. By the way, if you haven't disabled Chrome's Flash plugin manually, it might be time. Now, when I say Chrome is minimizing, I pretty much mean blocking it by default. VentureBeat reports that by the end of the year, Google's Chrome browser will, quote, only serve Flash by default for the top 10 domains that still depend on the plugin. Chrome will default to HTML5 video playback in most places, and users will be asked if Flash is allowed to come out and play before it's turned on. Of course, if you dig into the Chromium Dev website, you'll see those 10 sites include pretty much the biggest sites on the internet, like YouTube, Facebook, Yahoo, Twitch, Amazon, uh, and uh, Yandex, uh, OK, and .mail.ru. So expect plenty of Flash hell to keep rolling out on the internet for a while yet. Couple last thoughts before I go. Ars Technica reports that Missouri politicians have again failed to block municipal broadband. The latest attempt was snuck into a bill that prohibits traffic ticket quotas, and it was another scumbaggy effort to slip in just a little bit of text there to prevent well, small towns and cities from providing decent broadband service. And Bloomberg Tech says the Swift message system has been used for another online banking theft. The uh, bank is yet to be named. Back in February, hackers attempted to steal close to a billion dollars using the Swift messaging system. Around 80 million made it to the Philippines from Bangladesh's account at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Almost all the rest of the transactions were blocked before they could get anywhere. Our featured comment today comes from Stahl Kernis, who in response to ATM skimming up 546% says, it's not surprising that only this many developers think that security is a top priority because actually most developers from larger companies don't even have to concern themselves with placing security measures. Those things are taken care of by separate security teams that provide developers with a bubble they can work in. This way developers can spend more time developing than trying to make sure their code is ultra safe. Most of the time their code will operate in the bubble and nowhere else anyway. That's mentioning the development part, of course. Things like random USB sticks are another story. Developers should not compromise security in any way. Thanks for the comments. And if you got any thoughts on today's stories, leave them down below. And thanks to everyone who supports the show on patreon.com slash threatwire. You're keeping the show coming completely independent and ad free. If you can't donate a like, a share, or a subscribe goes a long way too. But seriously, if you find value from this and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. And we may even feature your adorable fur babies like wee little patchouli from Anthony right here in our next episode. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton and I'll see you on the internet.